Do you want to have a seat there? Yes, please. Oh, I don't think I've done this before, you know. This bit. I'm always doing that bit. Right. No, you interviewed me at uh, on the oh, canals. Oh, yes, of yeah. course. That was I nice. Think Nothing as, as in-depth in, uh, uh, as this, though. This is, is right. going to be fun. Welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. <laughs> of course. It feels like home whenever I come back, but it's, it's nice. It is your second home, certainly. Um, give me your elevator pitch for the new album. My album is about love throughout life and death, I think, is the kind of core theme that is reoccurring throughout the record. And, uh, and it's certainly my most personal one to date for sure. Wonderful. How does this new one compare to the other two? I certainly think with all three records there's a sense of progression in terms of how I am trying to challenge myself as an artist. Um, the first one being how can I incorporate uh, more diverse uh, different styles of music within my own kind of inherent sound and musicality. Second one was teaching myself how to sample and how to work with vocal samples and singer-songwriter samples of people whom I really respect. And the third one was um, asking two of my favorite ones on the second album to collaborate with me and write just full songs and go back to kind of the basics of music. And I think incorporating the humanity of just having these love songs and, and the, the very kind of universally um, I guess palatable, you know, feeling of just a love song with a bit of electronic music, you know? It was, yeah, it's well, really, it was, I feel like it was progression for me, but also kind of going back down to the roots of just music as a whole. Do you feel in some ways you've sort of uh, arrived somewhere that you want to stay for a while? Is this, is this what your future albums are going to be like? I think, uh, yeah, I think I've caught the song songwriting bug, to say, <laughs> to say the least. I've enjoyed it so much and it's something I've certainly explored through uh, the band I was in in New York and working with you guys and I've learned that I just, I really, really, really enjoy writing songs, helping with the lyrics and writing vocal melodies, harmonies, one of my favorite things, partially one of the reasons why I have the Bach tattoo on my arm. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, I, I've, I've enjoyed it so much that I certainly can't see myself straying away anytime soon. I mean, it, the, I think for new fans coming to Andrew the Beach for the first time and coming to Andrew, uh, Andrew Bayer for the first time, there's maybe this sort of dichotomy between the club banger DJ guy mm -hmm. and the guy who does these albums. And, right. and, 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 and you know, how do you, how do you figure that? Well, for me, it's, it's a lot easier for me to figure out, I think, because I certainly, I have, when I go to a club night or, you know, especially in my heyday when I was going every weekend in DC and really learning what club sounds really influenced me, um, I would still go home and listen to Sufjan Stevens and Bonnie Vere and that's sort of the, some of my biggest influences. That they, they uh, I, I always sort of separated those two things. There's an at-home listening thing, and then there's a clubbing kind of more high-energy thing. And I, and I feel like music has a place in you know different times of the day, different times of your life, and I've always found it quite easy to have multiple genres in my life, and mm -hmm. I quite enjoy doing that as well. Um, and I do think, though, I, I and I hope this comes across that there is a kind of core. Uh, musicality that does link my club music and my, you know, at home listening music, which is obviously my albums. Uh, and I do think you can listen to, you know, an electro banger and hear the breakdown and think, well, that could probably work in a down tempo Andrew Bayer track. So, so uh, I mean, how do you convert these songs into stuff that you can play in your DJ sets? How does that work? Well, with my last record, If It Were You, We'd Never Leave, uh, I wasn't really DJing that much. So uh, I think you could tell by the tempos. Um, <laughs> so something like Need Your Love took a lot of thought in how we would do the, uh, uh, put out the club mix. Um, and uh, that, was, that was a challenge. This one, I thought about it a little bit more. So for example, Immortal Lover is, uh, halftime 128 BPM at 64. So, so <laughs> did put a little more consideration into these things and I'm, I'm working on club mixes at the moment of some of these tracks and it's fun. It's kind of like revisiting the songs that we've written that are for me very personal, but giving them a new edge and figuring out a way so that they can work on a dance floor. Albums are the original 
and maybe the most authentic form of playlist, which is a kind of you know, new phenomenon in the way we listen to music. Why do you persist with, with albums? Why don't you just put out a bunch of single tracks? Because frankly, I am the most excited by other people's albums. So I want hopefully people to be excited by mine. Um, I, when I, uh, if, if I do see a single pop up of a new artist or if it's an artist that I've, I've loved and I haven't heard anything from them in a while and I, and I see a single, I think, oh, that's so cool. When am I gonna hear it on an album? So it's just, I don't know if it's a more old school approach, but I just generally like to digest music in slightly longer bits than just five minute single or whatever you know it's a uh, it's just part of me and I don't think that will ever leave I don't care if it's gone to a different format at this point um, I will always do albums and if uh, doesn't make sense great it makes sense to me <laughs> yeah, I concur with that how did you uh, approach the writing process on this album because obviously you've, you know you've gone from using pre-recorded bits of vocals and no vocals to an entirely song based album how right. did you Go about the writing uh, of this one. So with with this, some tracks because this is this album actually has been in the works for uh, over five years now, and with some of the core ideas, and some of them were from this band I was in in New York, and ideas that I super believed in that we didn't necessarily get around to using, um, and uh, some of them were brand new, written specifically for the vocalist that I was I were I was already working with, which was um, Allison and Anna. And so there was a, di a bunch of different approaches, but the main core approach was writing a bit of music or a bit of a ba like a backing track that is um, palatable for a singer-songwriter to start writing on. And these two people, they don't really work that much in electronic music at all. So I wanted to capture um, the kind of core elements of songwriting with using my you know, sonic structure of electronic instruments and beats and, and, and making it a way that they felt at home collaborating with me on. And that was certainly a challenge. I, I've, I went through hundreds of different writing beds and clips and all sorts of things because it's, it's difficult. You really have to think a different way in order to work with people that write more, uh, a more classic approach to these songs. And uh, for me, I learned so much by doing so. It was wonderful. You've mentioned these sort of writing beds that you, that, you, that you started with. Obviously the final tracks are very electronic based, but I sense there's quite a lot of acoustic instrumentation in there as well. Tell us a little bit about the, uh, the production and the sound design and the sound. Sure, so um, the, the core of the, the writing beds that I started with were all produced and kind of done at home, not necessarily in the box, you know, using some analog synths and stuff for vibe, but they were very kind of underproduced because I don't like to infer too much before a uh, collaborator like Allison or Anna came into to, to the fray, so to speak, just because I want to give them as much room to be uh, creatively expressive as as they would like to be. You know, I don't want to say write down a, or write a piano melody and say, just sing this. You know, you don't want to put them in a box. You want them to, that's the beauty of, of cl collaborating with someone is kind of everyone's quirks and intricities kind of come together as one thing. So they were very open and then once we got the actual songs together and the structure down, um, there was a lot of kind of classic approach to instrumentation. Um, I, we have, you know, acoustic piano, guitars, electric piano, there's a lot of uh, full strings, there's a lot of um, just kind of, uh, yeah, just bare bones uh, music. And then, and then also, um, also just my, you know, I, I guess signature synth sounds and sound design elements, but with more of a reference or more of a focus on uh, acoustic and recorded instruments versus just f like, you know, uh, purely focusing on a uh, reactor patch, flipping through reverse granular synthesis and s stuff like that. I just didn't focus as much on that on this record because I wanted the human element of the, this collaboration to really sing forward. 
What is it the, the difference for you when you're using real instruments compared to you know pulling them up on a on a, on a sampler or, an, or a synthesizer? Well, first I have to learn how to do it because it's a new thing for me. You know, I don't I don't necessarily incorporate that 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 many you know live recorded instruments in, in in my projects. And luckily, I have a really awesome network of friends and co and collaborators and contributors on this record who really helped me with that. Um, so, you know, it was the first time I've ever had live bass on, on my music and uh, multi-tracked kind of really interesting guitar parts from my really good friend Farron, whom I went to Berkeley with as well. And, uh, and yeah, I, I would always use him as a sounding board. It was nice. Even though was, this record was, you know, was done by myself, I always would call up my, you know, Farron at God knows what time. He'd be still up, you know, from the night before in L.A. and say, I'm freaking out about this guitar. What do I do here? I have no idea. It's sitting so on top of the mix. So I did have a wonderful network of people to help with that. It was fabulous. It was really nice. It felt like a band, you know. Wow. On, on that tip, you've you've managed to find two singers that knit together perfectly and are singing from the same hymn sheet. It seems there's a really clear voice that comes through. I th I, th I think from from the album, they could almost be the same person singing in two different ways. I think in our scene, there's a tendency to use more of a shotgun approach with regard to to vocalists and singers and songwriting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, where does it sit for you and, and what's your thinking on that? Yeah, I mean, for me, I, it, with my previous experience, especially working with you guys and with the, the, my influences, I, I'm fairly used to hearing you know, a couple of voices on a record. That's what almost makes it more of a record to me as opposed to a compilation of work. And uh, it was very, very firm in the belief that having Anna and Ali together because of the way that they, like you said, the, the way that they write is, is, is from the same hymn sheet. And um, for me, it made it so much more cohesive. It felt more like a family kind of project. It felt like a band that we were putting together. And it was, that was the really exciting part. And that was another challenge that I was willing to take on. And I loved it. Is that a direction you think you might continue in the future in terms of numbers of collaborators? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I certainly feel like we have a really strong set of people on this record, and I, I very much look forward to working with them in the future for, for a very long time. That's excellent. Um, if you could curate your own festival, who would be on the bill? Unlimited budget. Yeah, <laughs> I would. I mean, I would probably have to say some of my favorites, like Bonnie Ver, Sufjan Stevens, a little bit of Radiohead in there. You know, <laughs> if we could convince Kate Bush to come back. I mean, I grant. I, I did get to see one of her final performances in London, which was a life-changing one. But if we could get her to come back, maybe for just for the encore and the festival, I'd be happy with that. <laughs> there are, you know, echoes of Kate Bush in, in one or two moments on the album. What oh, yeah. is it about her that you find interesting? Oh, everything. I was captivated with her at a really, really young age. Uh, I had, I think my first Kate Bush record was The Red Shoes, which I still listen to on a weekly basis from start to finish. And just remember dancing in my room as a very young child, just uh, hearing a level of artistry and um, kind of weirdness, especially a you know young American kid. I was listening to a lot of pop music at the time, and she was just this kind of you know ethereal British goddess that was so exotic to me as a kid, and um, I just I was captivated just by her f just unabashed uniqueness and just she was just herself. You know, she would just talk about her friends in her lyrics and people that she's recorded with, and it just she didn't care if you knew them or not. It was, it was for her, and it, I just thought it was wonderful. I just, I really, I love her. Is there an element of that with you You're using friends of yours, I guess, in in Anna and Alison to say what you want to say? Is that right. is that is that part of the? Process I think it's too? interesting because I, I with with Ali, I, Ali's like she's a sister to me. We went to Berkeley together. We lived together, and. Um, so when we write, we, we're very collaborative on the lyrics and when she speaks from personal experience, I know those personal experiences because we've shared everything together and, you know, with someone like Anna, it's almost like, uh, you know, I, I first heard of Anna when I was at Berkeley as well. Someone showed me um, a cover she did and I just could not believe what I was hearing. So for her, it was like working with one of my idols and, uh, you know, whenever she would send something back, I would just go like, oh. 
I can't believe this is still happening, you know? So it was a very different experience working with both of them, but then it really just came together in this beautiful way that really is cohesive. It's, yeah, it's just yeah. So lucky, really. It's in some ways, some of those sort of subconscious feelings about how people sing and what they're singing about do, do tend to produce results in the real world. I, you know, I love how cohesive it is and, and again, how uh, the, there is this very clear voice that comes through from both of the participants. Right. You mentioned while we were having coffee before that you'd never actually met Anna. No, I haven't. We've, um, I feel like I've known her for years. I mean, first of all, we've been working on this record for several years. But uh, yeah, all of, all of our conversations have been on FaceTime, email, text, and uh, it's it's, I mean, fr frankly, I mean, I did start my career by collaborating with someone online, Signal Runners. Um, so I'm fairly used to doing that. <laughs> but uh, with her, it was, it was just so natural and amazing. And every time I spoke to her, I just felt like it kind of made my day. Uh, and she's just such a beautiful person through and through, uh, extremely talented, of course. And uh, yeah, I just, every time, I, I do speak to her, I just say, God, I can't wait to just meet you and give you the biggest hug of my life. <laughs> and it will happen one of these days for sure, but I do think it's extremely interesting that we never really got a chance to meet during the process, but maybe that's, maybe what gave it a bit of magic, at, you know, at the end of the day, so. Tell me about some of the other songwriters that you admire. I, I think I've mentioned one already. Sofiane Stevens is an absolute, uh, icon for me. Uh, I think um, I've I've been following him since before I went to college, and uh, I just every every single thing he does fascinates me. And this his latest album, um, Carrie and Lowell, which is for him his personal kind of uh, one of his masterpieces. I wouldn't say just his sole one because I think everything he does is brilliant. But that was a big personal record for him, and I think maybe subconsciously once I saw that. You know, and I saw him play it live, sobbing the whole time. You know, it was just unbelievable. It was so, so personal, I kind of, it maybe gave me a little kick in the butt to do something really personal myself. And, and uh, yeah, I can thank him for that. I mean, he's, he's an incredible, incredible songwriter. His lyrics are very, very personal to him, but yet universal at the same time. And yeah, really respect him. That's lovely. Changing tack just a little bit. Um... Tell me about the artwork for the new album. It's very striking. So that was um, actually an idea born from my husband, believe it or not. We were sitting on the couch and I was obsessed with the idea and I've been really wanting to for, for years to incorporate more statues in my visual kind of approach because I just love the eternity that a statue depicts and, uh, and I feel like with, the, with a lot of the concepts on the record, I really wanted to display that with the artwork. And uh, we, were, uh, we were sat on the couch and I said, yeah, I know, I'm, I'm absolutely doing statues for this one. And he said, you know, statues are a little cold. Have you ever touched one? And I was like, yeah, um, I guess I get that. And, uh, and he, uh, his idea was, what if we covered people in fabric and uh, have a, the visual image of a, a statuesque person, but something more human to display the human qualities on my record with it being more song based. And, and uh, he found this artist in Ukraine who uh, did a similar um, exhibition where, that was uh, similar to the album artwork. And we wanted to use it as a reference, but our lovely team at Involved contacted him with a translator, got in touch directly. He was really interested in doing the project and he, we commissioned him to do an entire brand new set of moving images, um, uh, pictures and all sorts of shots. And honestly, when they came back, it was, they were all so good, it made our job more difficult because we were just, every single one we would go through, it was just, this is brilliant. Oh, but this is brilliant. You know, it was it was amazing. I was so, so happy to be working with him. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very striking. It, I mean, it's sad for me in a way that you've broken from the uh, the long running Blade Runner art. Uh, <laughs> I had to give it a break. I oh, think. no, yeah. <laughs> it's, about, it's about time. <laughs> what is the most tried. played album in your iTunes collection? Oh, I mean, I feel like I'm starting to just plug Sufjan Stevens here. Hi, Sufjan. Um, the uh, it's 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 definitely Carrie and Lowell. Um, that that Carrie and Lowell album also um, Bonnie Vera's latest record as well because that that was such a for him a massive departure from his previous record. Um, and uh, kind of both of them are. I really enjoy artists that kind of do a little bit of a flip and 
and change it up from time to time. Um, and uh, Sufjan went back to his roots with this one. Bon Iver went bizarro, electronic, sampled kind of craziness. And so it was kind of both of my favorite things, but, and those will definitely be at the highest highest played on my, my iTunes. That's lovely. Yeah, I suppose I should just say congratulations. I've greatly enjoyed listening Thank to you. your new album. Thanks for giving me the advanced copy when you did. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, why don't you just tell the viewers at home what it's called when it's coming out? So the album is called In My Last Life and it comes out August 24th. I'm extremely excited. I think you guys are going to be really excited to hear the whole thing because it should be listened to as an album in whole, not each little bit. <laughs> Wicked. I'm done. Yeah, I think that's great. I think we got absolutely everything. Yeah? Okay. Really Marvellous. Amazing. Great.